video I'm going to run through the absolute essentials of potential flow theory. If you can understand the ideas in this video, you have made a good start in understanding potential flow theory. So we'll start with the obvious question, what is potential flow? And the definition is really very simple. Basically where you can write this equation you have a potential flow. So this is your velocity, it's a velocity field. This is your gradient operator, we call this del, and you should recognize this. Um, this is what del actually is, if you can't remember, but it's absolutely essential for fluid mechanics that you have knowledge of vector calculus. It's all based on vector calculus. This is your potential function and this is the lower case um, of the Greek letter phi. So what does it mean? What does it mean if you can write V as the gradient of phi? Well, if you can do this, you have an irritational flow. All potential flows must be irritational and I'll prove that in the next slide. And phi must satisfy the continuity equation. That's the other constraint. So, why is the flow irritational? For irritationality, the curl of the velocity field is zero. That's the definition of an irritational flow. Del cross V equals zero. So, we've got our definition of potential flow here, V equals del phi. So, let's find del cross V that's del cross del phi and we know that the curl of a gradient is always zero from vector calculus that's a rule you can prove it if you like it's true the curl of a gradient is always zero so that means that we've got del cross v equals zero hence the flow is irritational when you have a potential flow what about an incompressible flow so an incompressible flow is del dot v equals zero. That's the definition of an incompressible flow. Remember that we've said that for a potential flow v equals del phi. So substituting this in, we get del dot del phi equals zero. And del dot del is obviously del squared. So we've got this equation, del squared phi equals zero. You should recognize this. It's a very, very important equation. This is the Laplace equation, and this result is extremely important to potential flow theory, and you'll see why in a second. Also, this is the con continuity equation for potential flow. So, why is this so important? Well, it comes down to the superposition principle. This is the fundamental idea in a lot of potential flow theory. So, if you have potential functions phi1 and phi2, and these are solutions to the Laplace equation. We call solutions to the Laplace equation harmonic functions. Then, if we add these two, the result of adding them is also a solution. Therefore, we can actually add simple flows together. If one flow satisfies Laplace's equation, we have another flow that also satisfies Laplace's equation, that is the potential function of those flows is a solution to Laplace's equation, we can just add them together. For example, we can add a source and a sinks potential function and we get a flow called a doublet. We can combine a doublet with a uniform flow and that lets us model the flow around the cylinder. This is extremely useful. Um, this is another way to learn it. Uh, you may want to remember remember this. So you can say that flow 3 is flow 1 plus flow 2. You can just sort of add those two flows together and get a new complex flow. And the same is exactly true of the potential functions and also of stream functions. So let's finish by looking at the problem with potential flows. This is a model. It's a simplification of nature. The big simplification is that potential flows don't actually exist. There's always something else going on somewhere that makes the flows not exactly potential. Um, you should also remember that Richard Feynman hates them and it's a very good idea to pay attention to what Richard Feynman says or rather has said. And don't use potential flow models near solid bodies. The reason is these have boundary layers so close to a solid surface you're getting lots and lots of 
vorticity and as we said before you have irritational flow and how can you have nice um, steady flows and have vorticity therefore where you, in regions anywhere where you have vorticity you can't use potential flow for example the trailing vortices of a wing potential flow theory is not very useful there because you've got so much vorticity so that's the absolute basics of potential flow in future videos we'll be able to build on this to understand more complex flows so that's all for now thank you for watching